Greetings Ivy Artists. Uh, today we're going to be talking about So now we're going to start with Criterion A. Criterion A is about the focus and the method. This means that it's looking at your research question, your topic, and the methodology or how you went about it. I've already said the research question should be relevant to the visual arts which means architecture, fine arts, design and contemporary visual culture. Don't just compare unrelated artists. Don't simply narrate or tell uh, or describe. You should be analyzing, evaluating, researching, uh, showing evidence of critical thinking um, and, and you know originality, creativity, etc. It should be a discovery or a um, investigation unique to you and your essay. Make sure that if you are using secondary resources uh, or secondary sources, that's fine as long as you balance it out with your primary sources. So secondary sources are um, someone else talking about something or using something that someone else has worked on or researched or concluded or found out. And primary sources are you going out, looking at the work, for example, in a gallery, you talking to an artist, an expert in the field, anything that you basically source. Those are primary sources. So make sure that you have a balance of both. You know, if you are tackling something that is cliched or popular, make sure that your angle is super creative, something different, uh, surprising, unexpected. That's what we, you know, all want. We don't want something that we've seen over and over again. We don't want something that we've read about over and over again, because then you, you know, where's the learning? Where's the investigation? Where are you bringing in something new? something unique. How is it relevant to you and your investigation uh, of you know the visual arts? The essay must include visual uh, images. It has there has to be visuals with your essay. So again have a good balance of primary photographs uh, or images that you have either created or taken uh, and supplement those or balance those out um, with secondary images you know make sure that you go to um, libraries there's lots of visual libraries where you can where you can get good quality images with higher resolution uh, you know you can possibly contact individual galleries you should have a librarian in your school those are real gems you can really learn a lot from having a conversation with your librarian they will really help you out with your research there's five criteria in all, A to D. In A, they will be marking you on planning, how you have planned your question topic, how you have planned the development of that question and that argument, and also the strategies that you're using. How are you making the point that you're making? How are you creatively finding research um, and ideas that complement or support your argument. That's what you're getting marked on in Criterion A. So they're marking you on the clarity of your argument, your logical development of your argument. Another thing they'll be looking at in Criterion A is your, the structure of your essay. There should be some guidance from your supervisor or your school how to structure your essay. I'm not going to go into it, you know, too specifically, but generally speaking, when you structure your essay, there should be a, an introduction, there should be the body of the argument, the main argument and, and its development, and then finally the conclusion. Usually people start from the beginning, and then once they've kind of got a good, clear argument, they then write some kind of a conclusion, and then they write the beginning because only once you've really kind of edited all the extra information that is not really helping uh, the clarity of your argument can you really reach a 
synopsis like you know or a summary in in the form of a conclusion and only then can you really see very clearly what you were trying to do in the beginning and that's when the introduction kind of writes itself obviously nothing writes itself but it's a lot easier when once you get clearer about what the essay was actually trying to do i hope that helps in broad terms, the introduction should really talk about what it is that you're proposing to do. What are you proposing? What question are you proposing to, to ask and answer, right? So you're setting it up. You're saying, okay, in this essay, I'm going to be looking at or investigating blah, 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 your question. Something very sp specific and focused. And then in the body of the essay, you are developing a very logical clear argument that you are continuously backing up with lots and lots of evidence of research in the conclusion you are summarizing the argument that you have put forward and you are kind of concluding rounding off that argument so in this essay I have found that blah 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 now you know don't feel that you have to have a solid conclusion okay now i have proven that this is so you know because the visual arts a the nature of visual arts is that it is something that we are constantly debating that is a good thing right there is no black and white you may have come up with questions that um, through the research and the findings that are still kind of open-ended. That's absolutely fine. Don't feel that you have to oversimplify your essay in order to have a nice, tidy conclusion. It doesn't work that way. And in fact, if it is open-ended somehow, okay, it shouldn't be completely vague, obviously, but it means that you're, you're, you're thinking in a complex way, that you understand that the visual arts is not science it's not something that you have to prove it is something that you research investigate learn more about and that's the whole point of your essay criterion b is looking at your knowledge and your understanding it's looking at the context of your argument so are you taking into account the the influential or external or the situation that the argument is placed within? Are you considering the factors that are um, influencing your argument or have an effect on your argument? So for example, if you are writing an essay on a fashion designer, okay, make sure that you understand or, or clarify the context within which that designer is in. So, for example, the time period. Time periods are very, very important because there is a certain mentality that is kind of popular at certain points in, in history. Uh, what, is, what are the cultural factors surrounding that uh, designer? You know, how, are they influenced by where they are from or where they're living or perhaps uh, their, their beliefs, etc.? So, it, it just, you need to kind of make sure that you show that you understand that that designer is within a context either you know time wise or cultural wise or you know what is happening around that time with other designers a lot of creative people um, influence each other or or inspire each other uh, there may have been this is more kind of uh, you know if you look at you know I don't know Picasso for example Picasso's work if you're writing about Picasso actually don't because again Picasso's kind of been done to death but again if you have a, an amazing angle go for it Picasso um, very much influenced his work was very much influenced by the exhibitions that were on around that time exhibitions of strong uh, exotic African art that you know really kind of was was very inspirational to someone like Picasso at that time so again you're showing that you understand external influences of whatever subject or topic you are 
writing about. Make sure that it is subject specific. Do not kind of dip into other subjects. Make sure that it is the visual arts that you're writing about. Use appropriate terminology and concepts. This is very, very important. How are you going to use and know the appropriate terminology and concepts? You're going to do that by reading appropriate articles on that subject. This is why Google will not necessarily be the ultimate you know, source for you uh, of information. You, you need to read um, on this topic in books and magazines and whatever is relevant um, so that you know what kind of language is being used by people who are discussing that subject. Right? Again, the visual arts uh, usually you will be um, reading uh, things by critics, famous critics, um, who, who are using specific kind of terminology to talk about art, to talk about fashion. There, there's a terminology that accompanies every specific subject, right? It's going to be different to, you know, an essay in, I don't know, mathematics or uh, dance, for example, right? So make sure that you are using terminology that shows that you are familiar with the appropriate language that is related to your topic. So for criterion B, there should be evidence of an awareness of the historical context of your subject, the social and the cultural context of your subject, a range of dependable sources, right, that you are using to supplement your argument, using appropriate language that is specifically related to your subject, consistent linguistic style. Uh, what does this mean? I interpret it as you want to write an essay that is clear, that is legible, easy to read, okay? Uh, one of the things that, you know, you can start off with is writing, making sure that it is written in the past tense, all of it. Don't mix your tenses. Again, some of you are excellent at writing, that's great, but some of you really, really struggle. 